Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from grayflorals.com and today I'm back with another episode of After the Glue Dries. We are definitely counting down the final episodes and I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. Don't forget you can always go back and watch all of the episodes from this series in the playlist link down below as we talk about finishing albums, putting away our layouts, and capturing our stories in journaling and just you know, finally getting them put away, which I know is a severe struggle for myself, but I've definitely started creating a lot better habits and I'll do a full recap at the end of this series so you guys can see the progress I've made and captured. But today I thought we'd talk about sort of an interesting subject and I know not everyone has this sort of style for their albums, but I thought I'd go over albums that have repetitive subjects. So if you have specific albums for a specific trip or a specific type of activity you do, so you might have a child sports album that has all of their sports related photos, and those types of things can become quite repetitive. Today I'm showing you my Washington DC album because I visited several of the sites while we lived close to there and, you know, repeated visits to the same thing, but yet different photos, different memories attached. So this is not a completed album, it's actually a snapshot of more of my older habits. I haven't gone through this album and journaled on a lot of them, but I'd like to talk about to you guys some of the stories that I'd like to tell that are not so repetitive because sometimes we often get caught up on the actual event itself and not necessarily the details that you might want to capture. So this will be sort of a half flip through. I'm going to focus on the right hand side of the layout so you'll see peaks of the left hand side, but that's not the goal of this particular video. So opening it up, of course we have one of these blockers. The first page currently is this uh, Washington Monument photo with me in front of it. I think this is my favorite page of quite some time. Um, this is actually made during a live stream. I used to do those monthly a while, while back, um, but now they're over on Patreon if you guys are interested. Um, so as we flip through, you'll notice, especially on the right hand side here, that there's a lot going on. So here's a tag where I can do journaling. I have lots of different ideas for different things. There's a tag on the other page for journaling. This one doesn't have a spot for it, but these two pages actually go together so I can do one thing. We've got another one with no journaling. Oh, do you guys see a theme here? Back when I used to scrapbook more DC photos, no journaling. Even an empty slot, which we've done a previous episode about, and you guys can check that out. Link down below in the playlist. We just talked about how to fill in empty spots in your album. Here we have a pull tag that is for journaling. No journaling on it, but at least we have a spot for it. I think sometimes that was my biggest hurdle when I first started getting into scrapbooking. I really liked the design process, putting my photos in albums, but I often didn't leave room for journaling if I ever wanted to tell a story on that layout. Because not every layout needs a story. That's really a personal decision on what you want in your scrapbooks. Um, but nowadays I often always have a spot for it, whether it's a label like down here, or if it's just something simple like a hidden tag. Here we've got another label which doesn't have anything. I don't know if I've journaled on any of these. This one on the left has a, like a place listed, but it doesn't have journaling. So here's a take on some repetitive items that might come up in your album. I'll actually move this to center so you can see it a little bit more. So these are common Washington DC monuments. So we do have the Washington Monument, the Capitol Building. This is actually a conservatory, um, really cool. You guys should definitely go if you haven't been. Um, but what essentially I did was take pictures from several different days. I know, not chronological at this point and did day versus night. So you can definitely do comparisons to tell a different type of story. I think that's super, super fun. And they're not all the same exact angle. Obviously this one's a lot closer, this one's further away. All the night ones were taken on the same day, but I believe all of these were taken on different days. So it's really about telling the story in unique ways, especially if you have that sort of repetition you want to avoid. So that's a great way to do it comparison before and after, now and then. Lots and lots of different ways to do that. And obviously I haven't journaled on this one, but I can talk about the differences of DC during the day versus DC during the night and this sort of sunset dusk vibe, which is super, super cool. Um, and we never usually stayed that late. So those are some unique photos for um, this particular album, whereas these are common. We always saw the DC <laughs> monument. We always saw the Capitol building, like it's always there. You can always see it from some point of view. So those kind of things get a bit repetitive, but this is a great way to spice it up a little bit. Then moving back to the right hand side, 
A lot of these you'll notice are not single photo layouts. I often had a lot, a lot of photos or I did double pages like this one. So this one looks like it's a single, but there's more photos on this side. And you got some like these. Now, like I said, not every layout needs a story. This is about the exhibits we saw at the Natural History Museum. And again, we've got a tag here to do the journaling for both pages. So double pages don't always need two sets of journaling. Usually they can suffice with one. Another tag, this one's obviously a lot harder to get out, but it's there and ready for some journaling. Another empty spot, which is a-okay. Really depends on what you want for your layouts and how you plan on putting them away. The space well justified because it's a double page after that. And that's it for this album. So as you could tell, there's lots of layouts about the Lincoln Memorial. There's lots of layouts about the, not this one, the Capitol buildings repeated quite a few times. And I have a ton more layouts to put in here. So I do wish I had more examples, but I'm still sorting through all of the ones that definitely need dates. And a majority of these all need high maintenance work. They need dates, they need journaling. And since I had been to DC so many times, it's gonna take some uh, research to get all of these nailed down for the correct date. So here's more of the Washington Monument, but from a different angle. So if you have repetitive content that you wanna put into a specific album, whether it's a travel album, whether it is a specific type of, al like look at pandas, so cute. And I've hardly scrapbooked the DC Zoo trip, so lots more to go in here. But if you have a lot of items that you think are repetitive and might get boring, don't forget you don't need journaling on every page. You could have journaling in the front of a mini album and then just do a bunch of pictures throughout the album of like a sports event. Uh, maybe it's a letter to your child and then you put all their high school memories in there and you don't know how to journal upon all of those, but you could write them a letter at the beginning telling them how you feel, all of that, and then putting in all of the pictures into a mini album and not having journaling on every page. You really need to identify what you want out of the album or what that person might want out of the album. So for when I did my niece's album, which was a little bit ago, I finally gave it to her um, and it doesn't have a lot of journaling spots, but I did add a few just in case she wanted to add stuff in there, but you don't want to force it upon someone because obviously people remember things differently or want to remember things differently. So you want to make sure that you're capturing as much as you can but you also want to make sure that you're not scrapbooking too many repetitive events. Now, like I said, lots and lots and lots of the DC monument on different days, the Capitol building tour, lots of stuff about that. This is the uh, conservatory gardens again. This is the Library of Congress. You know, look at the Washington monument, which is my favorite monument. Not sure why, it just definitely is, because it's probably so prominent and it's a really cool obelisk shape. Um, Capitol building, repetitive, repetitive. Um, but you go for different reasons and at different times of the year. So while they might seem offhanded to someone as repetitive topics, that doesn't mean you don't have a different story to tell, which means there's no reason you can't scrapbook 50 photos of the Capitol uh, building, but it really depends on what you want. So I didn't mind doing this repetitive uh, sort of look in my album and I like that it's out of order so I could put for example all of the Capitol building pictures together I could I'm not going to I like the variety that is the album without that so like here's Library of Congress again and we just saw it quite a few pages back um, and this was the same day we only went there once but I like that it's mixed and matched so that someone can constantly be sort of intrigued by the album and then look at Capitol building over here, but this was taken from inside the Library of Congress. See, there's lots of little nuances to albums like these, is when you get repetitive things, whether it be a trip or somewhere you go often, whether that's the local park, whether that's your local national park, hiking, whatever it might be, they can get repetitive, but that doesn't mean there's not a specific story attached to them. So don't be afraid. If you've been to the park 50 bazillion times, to make an album about the park. Um, I made a DC album. It's not like I ever stayed the night there. It's always been day trips, quick trips, nothing ever like a vacation. So this is just day trips after day trips because there was so much stuff to do there. If you guys have a similar thing, maybe you go to the city very often. You could have a New York City album. Maybe you go to LA very often for if you're in the California region, whatever it might be, don't be afraid to have an album dedicated to it because 
if you wanted to tell more stories, it might get a little bit repetitive for a specific yearly album. So I pulled all of my DC layouts. I believe all of them. There might be a few that aren't. Do you guys see this? What is underneath that? That's curious. Oh, it's the actual clip. I forgot this is a clip, not a paper clip. So it's got a little flip up at the end. Anywho, you want to make sure that you can tell the stories you want to tell. And no, my future children, my future family might not be interested in all of these layouts. But what if they lived in the D.C. area and then they'll have captured memories from the early 2010s about the D.C. area. And it's just... For something so iconic as like New York City or, you know, a place that you go often, it's really, really cool to see the changes documented over time. So lots of these pictures inside the Capitol building, um, some of the specific monuments like Benjamin Franklin's monument, the Lincoln Memorial, lots and lots of stuff in here. But I think what's important is you figure out what one of your specific topics is that is repetitive and you highlight that if you have enough stories to tell about it or if you have enough pictures to tell about it sometimes it won't be a 12 by 12 album like i said you could definitely do mini albums of your child's sports history your child's high school career you know it's hard to get photos from kids sometimes um, when you want to document them but Sometimes capturing something that's considered repetitive. It might be the same time you go to the lake every year and you just have a lake album. Whatever it might be, I think it's really important that we do consider that even though they're duplicate style memories, there's definitely changes either in you or the places you've been. So you wanna make sure you're capturing that in some sort of fun way. And an album in specifics can really capture changes over time. So again, DC over a couple of years can change vastly. So when I go back, I could add more pages to this album. And that's when dates become important and I will add those in. Definitely need to go through my album specifically to sort through. And after I get all of my current layouts put away, that's probably the next step is to go through each of the albums that already has layouts in it. And that'll be well past this series, but I think this series so far has taught me lots of ideas and motivational tips for getting journaling onto layouts, for making journaling a priority on a majority of my layouts. Again, I don't justify journaling on every single one of my pages, especially when it comes to repetitive things like this. Sometimes journaling is just a small label, like here, just a small label because I have other layouts pertaining to this topic. Not every story needs the full fleshed out, or not every layout needs a full fleshed out story. So it really depends on how you set up your albums. Again, I like the non-chronological feel of a repetitive style album, and that's definitely what this is. It jumps from White House to Natural History Museum. Um, the Holocaust Museum isn't in here yet, but eventually that'll be in here. The Washington Monument, the Capitol Building, memorials after monuments, after memorials, all of them in here. And again, the pandas, really, just who doesn't love them? They're so cute. But I hope you guys enjoyed these tips for a repetitive style specific type of album. I think it's really important to do things sometimes beyond our yearly albums or whatever you want to call those albums, those family style that are typically chronological uh, just to give it a new fresh feel to something that is a big part of your life. DC was a big part of my life. Uh, we used to go all the time when we lived in Maryland and I think it's definitely worthwhile to highlight it in a specific album. Um, and it can also give you a new opportunity to tell different types of stories where if I put my DC stuff into a yearly album, it would be severely mitigated. I wouldn't have nearly this many layouts because they wouldn't fit. So dividing it out like this provides ample opportunity to create so many more stories. Is this a journaling? I don't know how I'm gonna journal on this one yet. I covered up my tag quite a bit, so probably right here. Gotta plan out my journaling still, but I hope you guys enjoyed this short flip through as well as those tips for journaling in these types of albums and how they can be super important. And sometimes it's easier to plan these out in advance versus as you're going through your albums, pulling out things to go into a specific album like my DC album. But sometimes that might be a good solution if you're running out of room in a yearly album, take out your lake trip photos, make it its own album. It deserves it, it's great memories, but really depends on your storage space as well because I know not everyone can afford to do albums about everything so some of us are forced to sort of shorten our stories whether it be in a project lifestyle layout or 
just making them smaller in an insert and not dedicating full 12 by 12 pages to each of those. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of After the Glue Dries. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because we have a few more episodes left as well as a ton of other crafty content. As always, I'll have tons of links down below so you guys continue to support the efforts around the world for making this world a better place, including the Black Lives Matters movement. And I'll also have the playlist link down below so you guys can watch more of After the Glue Dries. But thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys!